In this video, we are going to try and recreate one of the most popular games on the internet, Chrome's Dino game. And by the end of this video, we will have created something like this. I'm going to keep this video completely beginner friendly, so even if you are just starting out Unity, you will have no issues whatsoever. With that said, let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to start with a completely empty Unity project and I'm going to create a couple folders to keep things tidy. So the first one for the sprites and the second one for the strips. And now the very first thing we want to do is create a sprite. So I'm going to create a square sprite and that's the only sprite that we are going to need in this whole project. Alright, so now we can get started working on the game. So let's just drag and drop the square sprite into the hierarchy. Alright, and I'm gonna make a ground off of this, so let's call this ground. I'm just gonna pull it down a bit and let's stretch it up, something like this. Alright, so now it looks more like ground, but, but we also need to uh, add a collider here, so we'll add a box collider 2D. Alright, and I'm just gonna edit this collider to be a little down, somewhere around here. And I'll tell you why exactly. Now that we have our ground ready, we can start working on the player. I'll call this one player. And let's position it to somewhere around here. And also let's change the color of the sprite. Something like this. Looks cool. Awesome. So now we have our player, but we also need to add a couple components onto our player. And that will be the box glider 2D. And also the rigid body 2D. Awesome. And now inside of our rigid body 2D, we also want to make sure that we freeze both the rotation and the X position of our of our player because we don't want it to move left or right. So now that our player is ready, we can start working on the obstacles. And for that, I'm gonna use the square sprite again. Let's call this a spike. And I'm gonna make a large rectangle, something like this. Okay, so these will be our obstacles. I'm gonna change the color. Red reddish something like this let's place it around here looks good and we also need to attach a box slider 2d to it and a rigid body 2d as well and and for the spike we don't want it to rotate or move up and down so we will both freeze the wire position and the rotation in on our spike all right so now that we have our spike we can just make it into a prefab here and delete it from the scene now let's make some space on the ground Something like this and we will create a spike generator that will generate the spikes and for that I'm just gonna drag and drop the spike here just to set the position, unpack the prefab completely and remove both the box collider and the rigid body 2D component. We just need the transform component of our spike here but the first thing we want to do is change the name to spike generator. And now we'll use it to generate some spike that will move towards our player that the player will have to eventually jump off and in order to do that we also need to create a new script for our player of course so let's first do the player script and let's first drag and drop inside of the scripts folder all right here it is let's open this up and now we can start working on our first script all right so let's remove both of these using tags up here and let's move down and the first thing we need to create is a plot for the jump force all right and we also need to create a bool that will that will check if the player is grounded before it jumps and we'll set it equal to false at the start and let's just make it a serialized field so we can see it from the inspector panel now we don't need the start method here now we'll just go to the update method and we'll say if the player hits the key code dot space so if the player pushes the space key and we'll check if the player is already grounded so if is grounded is equal to true then we'll just make the player jump and for that we also need to get the rigid body component from our player so let's make a rigid body 2d and now we also need to create an awake method that will get the rigid body 2d component from the player all right so now that we have our rigid body 2d component 
we can just add some force to it to make a jump. And here we will just put in vector 2 dot up multiplied by the jump force. So when the player has jumped, we will say t is grounded is equal to false. Awesome. So now that the player has jumped and the is grounded is equal to false, we need to set it back to true once it hit back the ground. So we'll call a void on collision 2D inter method. And here we will check if what the player has touched has the compare has the take of ground, meaning if the player touches the ground. And if it has touched the ground, we will check if the is grounded bool is set to false, meaning if the player is not grounded already. And we will then set it back to is grounded. So let's save this and let's try this out. First we need to set the jump force. Let's set it to something like 500 and I'll change the gravity scale to 3 and I'll show you why exactly. Let's just set the jump force to 600 actually. You can of course play around with it. And now select the ground game object and make sure it has the right tag. I've already made the ground tag. If you don't have you can create one using the add tag and then hitting the plus sign here. Alright, we can just try this out. Our player is now grounded, if we try to jump, and here it goes. It jumps and comes back nicely to the ground. Looks good. And now all we need to do is create some spikes that will move, for, move towards the player. And the way we are going to do that is by uh, creating some spikes that will move towards the player and we will have some kind of a trigger here that will tell the spike, spike generator to create a new one at a set distance. And for that I'm gonna use the square sprite again. So let's just make a line from this, something like this. And so I'll just put it away from the spike generator which will give us enough room. Also let's change the tag. I'll just change the tag to the next line which I have already done here. And let's change the name to next line. And we will have to add the box glider 2D component to our next line. And make sure that it is set to its trigger. Awesome. Now we can get started with the spike generator script. Alright, so let's create a new script, spike generator. Here, give it a second. Here it is. Let's drag and drop inside of the script folder. Let's open this up. Awesome. So now firstly we are going to remove both of these tags and here we need to create a reference for the spike. So public game object spike. And the second thing we want to do is create a minimum time for minimum speed for the spikes. Let's create a couple of them. So for the minimum speed and the maximum speed and the current speed. Alright, and the next thing we want to do is, is change the start method to awake method. Now inside of the awake method we will set the current speed of the spike to whatever the minimum speed is at the beginning of the game. And we will also call the generate spike method which we will create in a second here. Awesome, so let's just copy this. Let's create a new void, generate spike. And inside of this we will instantiate the spikes and then send it to the player. So instantiate spike and at the position of our spike generator and also the same rotation. Let's also make a game object instance for the spike. And I'll show you why we need it in a second. So now the spike generator should create some spikes, at least one. For the minimum speed I'll put in 5. And the maximum speed, let's put in 12 for now. Let's put in the spike here. And now we can just try it out. So that's it play. And here you can see the spike clone is already generated. So yeah, it's somewhere around here. And it doesn't move because we need to create a script for the spike generate for the spike to actually move towards the player. We'll create a spike script. Let's put it inside of the scripts folder. And let's open this up so we can start working on the movement script of our spike. Let's remove both of the tags. And here we just need to create a reference for the spike generator. So let's create a reference here. All we need to do is just keep this spike moving towards the player. And we will use the transform.transplant method 
so transform on trustnet and we'll give it a direction so vector two dot uh, left and multiply by some speed which we have which we have already created in our spike in our spike generator so spike generator dot current speed multiply by time dot delta time now that we have done it we we also needed to hit the trigger which is the next line trigger so let's create a on trigger method and we'll check if the game object that our spike has it is actually has a trigger of next line and if it does well then we will just uh, call the generate spike method from the spike generator and we also need to um, change it to public so we can call it from here so let's go ahead and do that right now and i'll just call the generate spike method here awesome so now when it hits the next line it will generate a new spike and we also need to set the reference for our spike generator which we will do inside of the spike generator script so we already have a reference to our script for our current spike so each time a spike gets generated it will have a reference to the spike generator script already awesome so now we can just try this out let's go ahead and hit play and as you can see it already works so we can jump over these and of course we don't die we will have to work on it but all of these spikes look like uh, they are following a constant pattern and we have to break it we have to randomize it and we also need to destroy them when they get out of the camera so in order to do that we'll just create a new trigger here which will be called the finish line something like that let's place it outside of the camera view and we will set the tag to finish so now inside of our spike script we'll just have to copy and paste this and we'll check if the spike has hit the finish line so if it has a finish tag we will just destroy this dot game object so the spike will destroy itself the next thing we need to do is we also need to gradually increase the speed of our spikes over time and in order to do that we'll check if the current speed is less than the max speed and if it is we will just gradually increase the speed we'll have to create a speed multiplier here so public float speed multiplier and we'll set it some value so now current speed plus equals to uh, some speed multiplier which we will set outside of the outside in the spectre panel and here we need to give some value to our speed multiplier i'll put in something low like 0.02 which is um, still a high enough value but let's try it out for now it quickly gets out of hand like crazy so we also we need to keep it to a lower value to something like 0.0015 yep this seems to be a pretty good value so let's try it out looks good and we also need to randomize the position of each or spike so firstly let's just drag it somewhere on here give it some extra room all right and now we will try to bring some randomness to our spike generation and in order to do that what we are going to do is instead of just generating the spikes directly create a new method that will randomize the um, the time between each spike generation so something like this whatever you want to call it inside of here we will just call the generate spike method let's remove the public here instead of just uh, directly calling the method we will create an integer here which will be random bet and we will set it to a completely random value from ranging from 0.1 to 1.2 so that will give us some room to play around with now we are going to uh, in use the invoke method which will call the generate spike method after some time which will be the random bet let's go into the spike script and call the generate spike with gap method here awesome let's try this out let's try it out and now you can see the spikes are getting generated at different pace so there is a little bit of randomness we can of course increase it or decrease it depending on how you want your game to be like i think this looks good and the speed of these spikes also increases over time 
which can also be changed depending on the speed multiplier. So yeah, there's enough to play around with. And now all this left to do is just create some sort of UI text here that will keep track of the score. So I'll just create a text and let's make it white, a little bigger, something like this. All right, so now we'll go inside of the player script and we will have the score increase gradually over time. And for that, we also need to create a score variable. So int score. At the start, we will set it equal to zero. And we need to create a bool that will that will keep track if the player is alive or not. So we will check if the uh, if the game object that the player has hit has a take of spike, and if it is, then the player is dead. So is alive is equal to false. And inside of the update method, we will see if the player is alive, and meaning if the game is still active, we'll just keep the score gradually increase. And yes, we also need to change it to a float. Okay, so... And yes, we also need to create a reference for our score text. So using unityengine.ui And now down here, we will create a reference for our score text. So text, and we call this score.txt And we will have it change gradually with the score, with our score integer. So score text dot text is equal to score and whatever the score actually is, and we will convert it into a string, of course. And finally, when the game is over, we can just pause it. Set the time dot time scale to zero, which is not a good idea actually. But for now, we're just gonna do that. Now let's go back to Unity, and inside of our player, we are going to set the score text here, and let's hit play. And our game is finally ready, so let's try it out. And the score keeps increasing, we can jump over the these spikes or whatever you, you want to replace them with. And if we hit a spike, it will be game over for us. So let's try it out. Okay, and here we go. You can of course add some menu and stuff to it, but for now I'm just gonna leave it at this. Now you have a, a bunch of stuff to play around with. You can change the distance between the spikes and you can also change the speed variables and also the speed multiplier to create some more randomness. So this gives you a lot to play with. I hope you had fun watching this video and if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more awesome gaming content like this. And that's all for this one. I'll see you in the next video.